Hello everyone. Hope well, so in this video, we'll discuss the second problem of lead code weekly contest 353. Again, a medium level problem, but you can just see the accuracy because yes, there is an edge case which basically is failing and most of uh, the folks are getting wrong answer. We'll see. We'll see that case as well. Okay. So the problem name is maximum number of jumps to reach the last index. Okay. So it says that you are given a zero indexed array nums of n integers and an integer target. Okay. You are initially positioned at index zero in one step. You can jump from index I to any index J such that obviously that index has to be valid, right? Just see. And the absolute difference between the index where you jump and the index from where you are jumping, let's call them I and J, right? The absolute difference should be less than target, or I can say it lies between minus target to plus target, right? Since I'm saying absolute difference, obviously the absolute value should be less than target, right? Return the maximum number of jumps you can make to reach the last index that is n minus one. If there is no way to reach index n minus one, just return minus one, right? So just see, this is my array, right? One, three, six, four, one, two. Target is two. So I start from here. Now I, I have to find the maximum number of jumps, right? So what I can do, I can jump from this index to any other index such that the index where I jump and the current index, the, dif the absolute difference between their values should be less than two. Okay. So I can jump from one to three. So yes, one jump I have done, right? Now, can I jump from three to six? No, because the absolute difference between these two is not less than two, rather it's three. So you cannot jump from here to here. Can I jump from here to here? Yes, I can do a jump. Absolute difference is just one and I can bear a value of two, right? That's done. And then can I jump from four to one? No. Can I jump from four to two? Yes. So just see, by doing three jumps, I have reached from one to the last index. Hence, my answer is three, right? Now, again, it may look like a greedy approach, but will not be able to apply greedy here. I'll tell you why. Okay. Then there's the second thing. One, three, six, four, one, two. The target is three. Can I jump from here to here? Yes. From here to here? Yes. Here to here? Yes. Okay. Here to here? Yes. Yes. So one, two, three, four, five. Five is my answer getting it now what about this guy it's one three six four one two target is zero can i jump from here to here no right so you cannot jump from this index to any other index because the absolute difference between this and any other position where you are jumping should be less than or equal to zero that means the value should be same and obviously since that's not the case so you cannot jump hence you return answer as minus one right so um yeah let's talk about the intuition right let's talk about the intuition so something that could come to your mind is one, three, six, four, one, two, and this is my target, right? Right. So if I can somehow find that, what's the maximum number of jumps to reach this particular index, right? Suppose let's call it this index as I, right? If I somehow know what's the maximum number of jumps I can take to reach this index I, then using the same approach, I can find the maximum number of jumps to reach the last index right first thing why greedy is not applicable here let's see that why greedy is not applicable here suppose these are some numbers right these are some numbers and you took a greedy approach that okay i'll jump from here to here okay um suppose your uh, what do you call it target was three so this value was one this value was four okay you jumped here you did a jump suppose you again jumped this value was seven this value was seven. Now, after this, all the values are like this. Suppose one, two, let me, let me draw it again uh, on the left hand side so that we, we have more space and I can tell you diagrammatically so one, four, seven, then you have, uh, suppose 11, 10, right, right. Then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Suppose this is your array and uh, the target that I can bear is three. Okay. So what I'll do if I use a greedy approach, what I'll do, that means I jump from here to here, one jump, one jump, one jump. So total three jumps, I reach 10. Now from this 10, just see, I cannot jump further. I cannot jump any further. And in fact, I'll not be able to reach the last index as well. Right. Instead of this, can I do something like this? I jump from one to this one. Then just see, I can perform many other jumps getting it. So if you're standing here, or you're standing here and if you just consider these positions right so if you greedily say that okay i'll come to this particular index 
right? Then you may result into a position where you will not be able to perform any jump and also you will not be able to get maximum number of jumps, right? You have seen this case, right? This is one of the cases. So instead of this, the other way I can solve this problem is 1, 4, 7, 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, right? These are some numbers. Instead of this, what I can do is suppose I have to find what's the maximum number of jumps to reach this particular index, right? Suppose I have to find out this. What I can do, I can see what's the maximum number of jumps to reach this index plus can I jump from here to here, right? Obviously, in this case, you cannot jump, right? So let's talk about this case. It's 1, 3, 6, 4, 1, 2. So if I have to calculate the maximum number of jumps to reach this particular position, I'll check what the maximum number of jumps to reach here. So if I can reach from here to here, so whatever is the answer for this index plus 1. Similarly, if I can jump from 3 to 4, so whatever is the maximum number of jumps I can do to reach 3 from index number 0, that plus 1, right? I can basically keep a track of the maximum value that I can get, right? If I try to jump from all the indices before me, obviously if it's a valid index and that plus one, right? A typical dynamic programming approach, right? A very trivial problem. So that is how we'll basically solve this problem. Also, why we can take this approach? That is because the constraints are low, right? It's 10 raised to power three. So n square loop will give you 10 raised to power six and very comfortably your solution will pass, right? So let's see, let's see what we are doing. My answer is zero. Um, this is the DP that I've taken. Now, why I've taken it? Because it's the same thing that I told you, right? That if I'm standing at index I, then for all the index before I, I'll calculate what's the answer for those indices, right? I'll just calculate it. Now, what what is that answer? It's basically the maximum number of jumps you can do from index number zero to index number I, right? Let's call it J, right? Index number J. So for all the j's less than i, I have just calculated the answer. I have stored it in dp array. Okay. Now let's start calculating. dp of zero will be zero because since you are standing at index number zero, you do not perform any jump, right? Now i equals to one, i less than an i plus plus. I'll have I have to calculate answer for dp of i. How do I calculate it? For j equals to zero, j less than i, j plus plus. That means consider all the indices before i. So from zero to i minus one, right? If maths dot absolute value nums of j minus nums of i is less than target, that means if there is a possibility, if it's feasible to jump from index number j to index number i, then only I'll consider the answer of dp of j, right? So dp of i equals to math dot max of dp of i, dp of j plus one. Also, why most of the solutions are failing is because of this condition. What is this condition? This condition says that you will consider a jump from index number j to index number i if two conditions are met, what are those two conditions? The absolute difference between their, their value is less than target. And the second thing is, obviously, if you can reach this particular point, right? There is a possibility that you cannot reach from zero to J itself, right? This is also one of the possibilities. So the absolute difference between these two is suppose less than this. Suppose this is three, this is four, my target is three. Yes, you can do a jump because of the first condition, but what will happen if you cannot reach this particular index itself, right? So that's why dp of j is not equals to minus one, right? Initially, every every value is minus one. So this is the case that I have to take care and then only I'll be updating my answer. And at last I'll return dp of n minus one, right? Simple stuff. Just see I've written here h case dp of j should also be reachable. Then only I can use that step to come to position i, right? This is what I've written. So a very, a very, I would say a trivial dynamic programming problem with just one of the edge cases that you have to take care and that is why we are getting so many wrong answers, right? So yeah, that's it for this solution. I hope you learned something new from this video. Uh, do support it by giving up a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel as well. In case you have any queries related to the solution, mention that in the comment section. I'll revert on each one of them. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.